In this video, we're going to learn how to create functions and use them. So first of all, what is a function? A function is a block of uh, code. Uh, basically, we need uh, functions to uh, perform a specific task or operation. So rather than writing this block of code uh, many times in our uh, JavaScript code, we will just invoke the function whenever we need it. All right. So let's uh, create a new file and call it uh, functions.html and import the source code again from the previous file and change the title to functions. Let's the, uh, this deletes the script content to start from scratch again. All right, so let's define our first function. So to define a function, we need to use a function, okay? And then uh, a space, and we need a name uh, for the function. Let's call our first function grating1. Basically, right after the name, we need parentheses. So an open bracket and a close bracket. And um, after that, we're going to need an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. All right. Some functions, they will have some parameters between the uh, parentheses. But for now, we're going to use a function without parameters. OK, so we want what we want this function to, to do. We just want to include one statement. OK, we want a simple function. So we're just going to go window dot alert. Hello. All right. So this is the definition of the function. So now if you want to use the function, we need to invoke this function. And the way to invoke the function is by using the name of the uh, function. OK. And depending on whether the function has caused parameters or not, then inside the parentheses, uh, we might need to include the parameters. In our case, there are no parameters needed. OK. So let's try this. Okay, so now we can see the alert message saying hello, which means that the function has been executed. All right. Now let's try to use the name of the function alone without the parentheses and see what happens. Okay, we don't see anything. And now let's uh, put this in an alerts message and see what we get. Okay, basically what we're getting here is exactly the definition of the function. Okay, which means that if we use the name of the function only, that means the um, objects of function only. And usually in an alert message, it will just return exactly the definition that we put in our code okay so the right way of us using a f function is okay so we added an extra semicolon but anyway would have got the same yeah we will get the same results so to use the function we need the name of the function and we need the parentheses and later on we will see how to use the parameters if the function needs parameters okay so let's uh, go for our second example. So we're going to define a second function using function space name of the function. And let's call this one greeting2. And this time, the function is going to need a parameter, which we will call first first name. And what the function is going to be doing, it's going to send an alert message okay and in the alert message we're going to use the parameter okay so you're going to say hello space and then we're going to need to use our parameter first name and then we need 
uh, an exclamation mark after that. All right. So apparently, okay, we need a close bracket. Yeah. All right. So this is the definition of the function. Now let's invoke the function. So you're going to need to use the name of the function. And this time we do need a parameter. Okay. So we're going to need to use a parameter. It's a string in our case. And let's use, for instance, John. Okay. Let's um, comment this line so that we don't invoke the first function. And now let's see what happens. So we just invoked the second function and it's uh, showing the alert message, which is exactly what we were expecting from this line of code. All right. So if we change John to any other name, then the alert message is going to change. Okay. All right. So now let's um, try something else. So we're going to try another type of function. Let's define a function that will take as parameters a couple of numbers and it will return the sum of these numbers. Okay, so function, let's call it sum and let's give it two parameters, A and B. Okay. So in, in this case, we're going to need to use a return. Okay. So the return means that the function, function's output is going to be whatever we're going to put after the return. Okay. So if we set a certain variable x to sum of 3 and 7, for instance, since the function is returning a plus b, which is going to be in our case 3 plus 7, which is 10, that means that the uh, value of x is going to be 10. And let's um, verify that and use a window alert of x and see what we get. Let's just comment this one, control forward slash. See, so basically we're getting 10. All right. Okay. Now let's um, go for another example. So this time we want a function that will take a couple of parameters. So we want the function to take two strings, uh, and these two strings we want them to be IDs of uh, certain HTML elements, and we w we want the function to swap the content of these two IDs of these two HTML elements. All right. So. We're going to go function. So first, let's just comment this for now. OK, so let's uh, name it uh, swap. And it's going to have two parameters. So first one is ID one and then ID two. And then curly brackets and now we're going to define a variable that where we're going to store the content of the first element. Okay, so we're going to call it variable uh, y, and inside y, we're going to store the content of the first element, which is the, the element um, of ID 1. ID uh, ID one yeah so so we're accessing the inner HTML okay and we just set the value of y to the inner HTML of the elements of ID ID one okay and we're gonna do the same thing with the variable uh, z which we will set to the inner HTML of i uh, of the elements of ID ID two okay and now we're going to set the uh, inner HTML of ID2 to Y and the inner HTML of ID1 to Z. Okay. 
get elements by id id2 so this time the inhtml is going to be set to y if you just duplicate that using control d change this to set and this to id1 okay okay so now if we go to the couple of buttons that we have here so let's say that we want this button to when we click on it we want to change or swap the contents of facebook and apple And the second button, we want to change or swap the content of Apple and Microsoft. Okay. So we're going to need to say in the uh, on click attributes. So we're going to invoke the function here. So we're going to use the name of the function. So swap and the function needs a couple of parameters, the first ID and the second ID. So the first ID is Facebook and it's a string. Second ID is also a string. So Facebook and Apple. We're going to need to give Microsoft an ID as well. And same thing, this button needs a on-click attribute. And we're going to invoke the function swap again. So we've got a couple of parameters, and this time it's going to be Apple and Microsoft. All right. So let's try. Okay, it's not working. Something went wrong. The reason is because Okay, so let's uh, have a look at our console and see what went wrong. Okay, so basically we've got an error in line 62 and if we look at the function curly brackets, we close the brackets here. We're supposed to close it at the end of the uh, block of uh, code so it should it's supposed to be there so let's try again and refresh the page and now if we try so you can see that the first one is working so you can see that's the um, Facebook div and the Apple div they swap their uh, their content and also let's try the second one so it is working as well all right so um, so you can see how uh, powerful functions ca can be so they will avoid us um, a lot of effort and uh, time as well so all right in the next video we're gonna move to objects